Hey, thanks for coming back to join us for part two. We'll be picking up where we left off, and James will now be hopping into a Maverick X3. I'll hop in right with you. Yeah, I'll get a shot of the X3. If you haven't had a chance to watch part one of the video yet, now would be a good time to go and get caught up. You can find that video on our channel. Now you're going to see James cruising in a new X3. We thought it would be cool to give you guys a feel for the different machines. Awesome. I like the seating position a lot better. Hugs you really nice. <laughs> Nice view. Yeah. See if we can fly in this place. Dan's leading the way here in the new X3. We're trying to find Bob's elbow in the overgrown trails here. Got a much different sound. Much different sound? Yeah. Oh, this is where we went off the other day. We got lost in that mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys were, somebody was leading, I think Craig or somebody, or you guys were, oh, you guys were in the front, weren't you? Somebody? We swapped off a couple times, yeah. This is close to the bank right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to wash away eventually. Yeah, we'll go through here. This is where a renegade got rolled off a couple years ago. Yeah. We're coming around these corners. This throttle stuck wide open. <laughs> he came around that corner wide open. We call this Frank's Corner. He clipped this tree. Oh. Uh, it just, he, he, right here, see? Yeah. He bent the frame. He uh, literally bent the frame. Brand new renegade. Yeah, that's how quickly it can be over, too. Just one little mistake. Yep. You're not suck, eh? Yeah. Julian and I were talking about that earlier. How it's not usually when you're riding hard where things get broken. Yeah. It's just when you're kind of you're not on your game. We haven't had a chance to ride these trails much this season, so some of them are overgrown. So what you see us doing is trying to find our way to Bob's elbow the best we can without getting lost. Last time we got off track and we got stuck in some real deep mud in one of the previous videos. This thing feels a lot nicer just uh, crawling around. I think. I'm just sitting in it. Yeah. We've got the, the razor kind of firmed up on the suspension. I can't it's still flooded down here this time of year. It's so flooded, it's ridiculous. It's like twice the amount of last year. No problem. It's a little harder to see than the razors, though, eh? Yeah. We've been using the FiuTech G5 gimbal with a GoPro Hero 5 in it for over a season now. It's the camera we use to get a lot of the in-cab shots, the nice smooth ones. Uh, we use it outside on a boom pole. Uh, it really, it does well. It's a, it's a good product on a good budget. Um, we figured we'd share it with you guys because it's something we've found works with us. It's splash proof. We've had it muddy. We've had it wet. We've dropped it a few times. It's a really solid product. Um, we aren't getting endorsed by FiuTech to say this at all, but one thing we like to do is, is share positive reviews with you guys so you know what kind of products work in these kind of environments. I think this is where we have to go right. Yeah. This is where we went out. We gotta go from here. Okay. See right here? Yeah, we off. Right here. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, there it is, right here, see? Yeah, I remember that tree from last time. Yeah, we've seen this big... <laughs> Holy <laughs> it's so tight here. Where's the bank, man? <laughs> oh, <laughs> see? Ah, we go 
waiting in the river. Yeah, that was a big mistake to make. Shoot <laughs> off. We had um, we by here last week. This us last is this, week. I think this is where we went off in the wrong direction. I think we're gonna, we're gonna turn right here. Yeah. We right went here. off in there and got stuck in that crap. This shot really lets you see how tight some of these sections on the trail are. I'm barely squeezing through there. I keep looking back and check the camera because uh, it's hit so many things. I don't want to lose it. Somebody must mean me in this case. Wow. <laughs> Let's go back. 
This way. You gotta. Hey, you gotta go this way. I don't wanna use his. Yeah, okay. You know what? I, I didn't breathe right for like six weeks after a roll. Wow. So, since Ivan rolled his machine here in the past, he's a little stressed out about this spot, so he asked me if I could take his razor through it. I haven't been in a 900 XP since I got rid of mine, so it'll be a nice little flashback. obstacle for sure. What's that? It's a unique obstacle. Oh. Like I said, I didn't breathe right for six six weeks after I rolled. Go, Go wider. Thanks, Julian. No problem, man. my turn to take the turbo through. Driving that 900 XP makes the turbo feel sluggish. That 900 has instant response. As soon as you touch that throttle, you're moving forward. It does feel a lot easier and more controlled than the turbo machine though. James wears a helmet all the time because he's special. <laughs> decides to show us how it's done on an ATV at the end in two-wheel drive. Can I hop in with you? Can I hop in with you? James has taken a liking to the X3 and decides to hop in the other one. Is she pretty new to you? What's that? The, or the X3 is reasonably new? Yeah, I've never had this before, so I'm okay. using this whole sport. Nice. Got a good machine to get into it, huh? That's what Dan keeps telling me. I'm James. Hey. Nice to meet you again. It's a nice hell of a machine, that's for sure. Have you been in the Razor or the 1000 or anything like that? This is the only one I've ever nice, had. Nice, nice. It's a hell of a first ride. So it looks like we've made it to our next big obstacle, the one we call Bob's Elbow. So we're all going to go take a peek at it and plot our line through it. I wasn't showing off the single drive, that's for sure. <laughs> I think I just forgot to collect the switch. I had it low. Oh, 
trying to experiment with different camera angles on obstacles like this to give viewers a better feel for the obstacles, but we find that the camera angles still just never really do the obstacle justice. You're good. of how big these drops really are. So we all managed to make it through Bob's elbow pretty easily this time. You never know with obstacles like this, they change every time you hit them. We've got some other videos from this spot that didn't turn out quite as well. a nice fun climb we've been doing for a while. Generally if they don't stop it don't, it's never too bad. It's pretty long and it's nice and rooted. It's not super difficult but it's a lot of fun. Delta. Um, on the track. Can 
get hot. Okay. So anything under 200 is good for temperature. Yeah. But you do five laps in wet mud, muddy kind of conditions. Yeah, it's just taping it up. You can get it up there and then when it turns orange, above 200, you know, to ease up a little. That's, you know, you can blow up the bottom. Yeah. Pretty neat. Going down the steep part of this trail here feels real weird. It's uh, awesome to go down such a steep grade, and there's a lot of grips. So you can stop wherever you want. That's a nice climb. That's cool. Yeah. set of trails behind his place. Uh, one of the guys we ride with. The Redneck Riviera is here. We left. You wouldn't want to get caught in there. Like we've mentioned a few times in the past, it's been an excessively wet season, so there's washouts everywhere. People must have just carved it out last year. Here's a good place for us to stop and we're just going to have a snack for lunch. We're going to get some energy back in us and we're going to hit the trail. We're going to end part two here and it's a good place to start off with part three. So hopefully we'll see you back in the next part. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, check out our other channel, Adrenaline Junkie Project, and hit that like button. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.